Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a full step-by-step -step guide, just running you through how to fit a new timing belt kit and water pump on this 2012 Volkswagen Tiguan. It's the 2 litre TDI CFFB engine. Now, just before we get into the video, I'll just show you, we've got a full gates timing belt kit. It comes with a new belt, there's three idler pulleys, a new tensioner, and a water pump as well. You always really want to be fitting a water pump at the same time if you're fitting a cam belt on these engines. You've got a new auxiliary belt, and it does just come with some studs and nuts in there as well. So, um, but we've got we've got the timing pin kit there. But if you check the links in the description below, I put links to all the parts used, all the timing tools. You know, I list the torque settings and just put links to everything and all the tools that we're using as well. Obviously, we can, you can see we're using two posts to ramp. It does make the job a little bit easier, um, but to be honest, it's not too bad to do without a ramp or timing belt. Once you've got to a certain stage, you can only do it from a certain height anyway. Um, but all I do if I want using the ramp is just jack it up really high on the driver's side here, put an axle stand under it, just to give you a decent bit of access behind the wheel to the lower section of the cam belt, that's all. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, just take the top timing cover off, then we'll get it up in the air, run you through some of the stuff from underneath, then we'll drop it back down, we'll be putting the jack underneath the engine and um, taking the weight of the engine where we we'll strip all this side down and get the engine mount off. So just to start with, we'll get it up in the air and just run you through everything on the side there. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. We've got quite a few other timing belt videos on there you might want to check out as well. Right, so now I've got the wheel off, next thing you need to do is just get the arch liner out of the way. You don't have to fully take it out, you can just tuck it out of the way. Um, basically you've got a load of little torque screws just holding it on. So you've got one there, another one there, and a few on the way up around the arch liner. That one there, hopefully with them, und them undone we should be able to tuck it away. Um, it's just a couple of fixings on the bottom and we are just going to take the under tray off as well. You can do it without, but it's just when dropping the antifreeze down, you can put a catch tray underneath it and it's loads easier if you just get the under tray off. Just to get the under tray off, I think some of these have been changed because there should just be torques normally on them all the way around, a few across the front, and there are normally some bigger torques at the back. Um, this one's actually missing one, there's one snapped off in there, and it's got a normal hex at the back there. But these would normally be, I think they're normally torques 45s in there. So we'll just get the under tray off now, get the arch liner tucked out of the way, and then run you on to the next step after that. I'm just going to walk torques 25 screwdriver or socket just to get the arch liner ones off. Uh, so we've got the arch liner out now rather than just tucking it to the side just for the video to make it a bit clearer did actually just take the whole arch liner out just for the sake of another three bolts so um, but now that that's out of the way you can quite clearly see the bottom crank pull here next thing we need to do is just get the auxiliary belt out all you need to do to get the auxiliary belt out you can if you just use 16 mil spanner if you just turn the tensioner in the clockwise direction just while you hold it there the belt goes slack so you can then just pull the belt off now you can if you want actually just pin the tensioner up you can just see a little hole there when you turn it around you can actually pin it up through into there to lock it in the sort of open position but you don't really need to it's better in this this position when it's off to get the timing cover off so i normally just pull it around with a spanner take the belt off quick the next thing we do just get the belt off and once we've got the belt off we're just going to undo the bottom pulley just these four outer bolts and you're going to want a triple square size 10 socket to get that off so We'll just do that just a quick note as well just before we get it off just for when refitting it but there's a little noggin you can just see there which you need to line up when refitting it with this cut out on the pulley that's all we'll just get them off now and run you on to the next step okay, i've just got the auxiliary belt out just way to check the auxiliary belt if you just turn it inside out pinch it up and you'll just see if they're worn, you'll get a lot of little cracks on there. But it's always a nice time to change the auxiliary belt while you're taking it off anyway. I've got a new one for this one tonight. Uh, but you can just see, while the tension is in this fully backed off position now, that it just gives you access to the Torx belt there. Whereas if you'd pinned it up while you're turning it in the clockwise direction and lock it off, it actually blocks that hole there. So you're better off just actually not putting the locking pin in. 
Um, we'll just get this pulley off now and then move on from there. Right, so now we've got the pulley off, you can just see the lower section of the cam belt. All we're going to do for now is just get as many of these bolts out on the lower casing as, as we can. Just try and do as much of the, as the work from underneath that we can access while we're up in the, up in the air. So once we drop it down, we're going to need to put the jack underneath the sump. And it just make access underneath a little bit trickier, but it's not too bad. Uh, so we've just basically got some Torx bolts all holding the casing on. Just want a Torx 30 socket. You can see we've got four there. You might be able to access another one up there. You might just be able to squeeze in to get. I'm going to un just undo this 10 mil there. Now this pipe's not going to come fully out of the way, um, but once we get that off over the stud there, eventually once we drop it down, we're going to take that bottom bolt out for the engine cover. I might actually, have, no, we'll leave that till once we've got it on the jack, because then you can lower the engine down just to get the bolt out, because the chassis is in the way at the minute, that's all. So. But we'll just get as many of these bolts out as we can. You might find the cover might come out, but it might be trapped by the top cover. So and we'll show you that when we get to it, uh, once we've got it off. Uh, so I've managed to get the cover off. Once you've got all the bolts undone, it does actually come off okay um, with the top cover still on. And just one thing, just to make note of, more so when you're refitting it, this little section there sits on the outside of the other cover. The top cover sort of drops in and just lands on the inside of there. Just sort of make sure you ain't got that trapped when you're refitting it, that's all. Uh, so at this stage now, we're now ready to drop it back down. Just put the jack on the sump. Um, I'll just show you just quickly, just before we do drop it down, basically once we get to the stage we're ready to turn it over and put it in a timing position, you just want a 90mm multi-spline socket and put that on there and then basically I can use a nice long reach extension to the outside of the wheel arch and turn it over with a ratchet while looking at the whole belt from on top. And just quickly as well, just show you on the pulley there, basically got a little mark there. which is the timing mark, which will line up with a little arrow. You just see on the timing tool, there's a little arrow there, just located behind that. And that'll actually line up with that line, and then it'll all lock into the little pinhole there once it's in the right position. But I'll just show you in a little bit more detail once it's in the proper position. Um, but just for now, I'll drop it back down. And when I do put the jack underneath the sump, I'm going to put the jack towards this side of it, just so it allows a little bit of an area here, so we can put the catch tray underneath it to catch the coolant as we undo the warp pump, that's all. Right, just show you quickly, just put the jack under the engine there with a block of wood as well, just to cushion it slightly. And all I've done is just give it a few pumps, just light pumps. All you're really looking to do is just gently take the weight of the engine so that when you do undo the engine mount, the engine doesn't just drop down all of a sudden. Just obviously took the engine cover off there as well earlier on. It's really straightforward, just pops on with some, just over them little bungs there, that's all. Um, just next, just going to run you through a few bits. They're quite straight, straightforward bits that we're going to do. I'll just run you through them and just speed through the video as we move them out of the way. Basically, just to give us some access to the timing belt on the top cover now. So we've just got the coolant reservoir to remove out of the way. Just, yeah, just standard Volkswagen connector. You can just flick it that way. Sometimes you just use like a flat-bladed screwdriver, just flick in there and pull it out. Now, you can do it without taking this out of the way, but the pipes are just in the way a little bit, and it's just for the sake of the video. It just gives us a nice little clear area to work with. But with it undone, we should be able to tuck it over the front here as well. Um, but if you just to the back of it, you've got some little torque screws, just one at the back there and one on this side as well there. So we're just going to undo that. We've got the fuel filter to get out of the way. We've got three 10 mils holding that on. Just one that you can see there. Another one down the bottom there. And there's just one, a nut. It just sits on a stud, just in that little gap down there as well. So we'll undo that. We're going to undo the connector for the DPF pressure sensor here. And then the actual pressure sensor, we don't need to undo the pipes. All we'll do, we've got two of the 
triple square sockets holding that on. When we undo them, we should be able to remove the bracket and tuck all that out of the way as well. Now I'm going to try to do it, prefer to do it without disconnecting the fuel lines if we can, um, but with a fuel filter under and out of the way, we should just be able to tuck the fuel filter towards the back and then that way we haven't had to disconnect any of the fuel lines and it just isolates any starting issues. Um, you know, it's not relating to the fuel system and that's all afterwards. So, so if just get all them bits done now, then we'll move you on to the engine mounting after that. Right, so you can just see now we've got most of that tucked out of the way it gives full access to the timing belt cover here just without undoing the fuel lines just make it a little bit tight just to show you on the video but you can quite easily get the cover off there and i just much prefer to do it without disconnecting the fuel lines if possible so uh, next thing to do just get this top cover off basically just got some of these spring clips on it really straightforward to get off and just pop them off i think there's three of them on there And once you've got them undone, the cover doesn't just pull off, it does actually just lift up slightly. It just has a little lip on the back that tucks around the back, and you can get that off. So we'll just get that out of the way in a minute. And then we've just got to undo the engine mount. Obviously, we took the weight off the engine with the jack, um, but basically we've got some 18mm sockets there, 16mm on this main part in the middle there, and just a 30mm through the back there. So we'll just get all these out of the way next, and then we're going to have to undo the lower section of the mount there after that. Right, so now we've got the top part of the engine mount off you can, and the top cover off there. You can see all the, well, most of the timing belt now. The next thing we're going to do is just take this section of the timing belt off there. Uh, this section of the engine mount off, sorry. And basically you need a 16mm so 16 mil socket or spanner. We've just got one fix in there. There's another one just at the back, just tucked down there. It's fairly easy to access. And there's one just slightly lower down that I just couldn't quite get earlier on. But while you've got it on the jack, you can just lower the engine slightly and then you can get it straight out. It's just in its in its position when the mount's on, the bolt, the chassis gets in the way a little bit, that's all. So we'll just get them three bolts out and this one off next. And so that's the mount out there. As I lowered it down a bit, just allowed me to get the bottom one out. The bottom one's obviously got the stud on for that water pipe as well. Right, so now that's off, we can see the full timing belt. We're just going to turn it over now and put it into the timing position. Just like I said earlier on, I'm just going to use that 19mm multi-spline socket just on there with a nice long extension. Just take it out the side of the arch so that we can turn it over while sort of leaning over and looking at all the pulleys. Um, but I'll just show you quickly. Basically, there's a hole at the back there, which is where the, the pin's going to go through to lock the uh, fuel pump in position. Basically, through this little hole there on the camshaft, there's a little, that little gap there is basically going to locate with a hole which is somewhere around about this area around here. And then I'll show you the timing position for the crank pulley. Once we've got it turned into place, if you basically aim to line the camshaft up first, once you've got that in line, as long as the timing's okay, it should be in the timing position on the crankshaft. But obviously we'll double check that with the tool once we get there. But if you aim to get there to start with, with that, you should be pretty much bang on to go with. So. And obviously once that in line is in line, as long as the fuel pump was timed up correctly as well, that should be lined up there. But all we'll do now is just turn it over into position and then just show you the correct position. Then we'll run through just pinning it up.
that. So we've just turned that over with the ratchet down the bottom there. And I forgot to say earlier on, with an engine, you should always turn it in the direction that it would normally turn it, turn over. You don't really want to be turning it backwards. It's okay, just, just tweak it a slight bit if you need to, if you just go past it, but really you should always turn it the direction that it normally turns over. Um, but basically the, the crankshaft should be in line now. I'll just run, show you that in a minute. If you just look through there, you can just see the locating hole at the back. That's where the timing pin will go through. You just need to make sure when you're putting the pin in that it does go right through and right into the back there and it'll lock it off. And then the fuel pump, you can just see this little cut out there that's lined up with that locating hole there. So the other pin's gonna go through there and lock into there and lock that solid. Once we've got them two pins in there, we'll just send it up in the air and just show you the crankshaft. That should hopefully be in line as well. So once we've locked this up, we are gonna undo these three bolts on the outer pulley there. It just allows a little bit of float in the pulley. Same on the fuel pump as well. It's just when fitting the belt and you put the tensioner on, it gives a nice even tension all the way around the belt. Um, but these three outer ones only slacken off the outer section of the pulley there. Just look through the pin, where you're pinning it up holds the actual back section of the pulley. So when you undo them, it doesn't actually lose the timing position. And the same again with the fuel pump. It's just locking the back section of it, whereas these are just allowing the pulley, the out pulley, just to have a little bit of float, that's all. So just put the pins in the two top ones and then just show you the crankshaft position. Right, so just can't get the pins in. I've just locked the actual crankshaft in place at the minute, but it could be that the timing is very slightly out, slightly off on these, or just with the belt stretching over time. So all I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna put the two pins in yet. Obviously I know I'm near enough there, Basically, I'm just going to put them two pins in once I've got the belt off. It's just they can be quite tight to get in. You can see it's near enough there. It's just very slightly off that so. Um, but just for now, I'm just going to slacken these bolts off, the three bolts there. Just They don't need taking out anything, just in slacking it off so that the pulley will float there. Same again on this, the fuel pump as well. If we just show you the timing position for the crankshaft, basically we've got that little marker there which lines up just on the tool, so it's always just tucked behind the back there, but you'll just see. Let's just try and focus on it. But it's just a little arrow there as well, which that arrow lines up with the line on the pulley there, that's all. And it slides in, and then the actual locking piece is just located in that pinhole at the back. So I'll just show you that quickly. A bit clearer to show you from the top if you just slide it out you can just see the pin there nicely locks and drops into place there so we know that the crankshaft's lined up absolutely bang on these are near enough there it's only literally just slightly slightly out not even half a tooth or anything like that so all we're going to do now is just say slacken these off and then once we've done that we, we can take the tensioner off we'll take the belt off and then we can just slightly adjust the pulley and just lock it off properly that's all so we'll just do that quickly now and then move you on to the next step. I'm just got a 15 mil spanner for the nut for the tension of that. So that's the cam belt off now. And it doesn't look in too bad a condition. Sometimes if you just turn it inside out and just pinch it up, you can check it. Um, but say so they're due every five years on this. It's a new car, so we're just putting a timing belt on, just for peace of mind. Here's a Volkswagen belt. Don't think it'd be the original one. It's done a few miles, this one. Should be on its second belt by now. And we did just pull it off, just with a tensioner as well. It's just sometimes they're quite a tight belt, so it's just a little bit tricky. You can sort of pull the tensioner off the tensioner if you want to try and get the belt off, but they are a little bit tight. What we're going to do now is just put them pins in them two pulleys and just lock them properly in the right place. And just a quick note as well on the tensioner. You'll, you'll probably notice on the old tensioner, it's got this little locating peg there, which does actually lock into a little place in the back of the block. You might find that your new tensioner is different, um, but there is actually a bullet in from Gates. The new tension doesn't actually have the locking peg on it. You just put it on and then when you tension it, it'll just, as you put tension on it, it just pulls it and just sits where it wants to sit. It doesn't actually have a locking peg, that's all.
I'll just show you quickly the old one if it does have the locking peg the locking peg sits in that position there that's all uh, so it's quite a common bullet interchange that um, but at this stage now as well just before we do pin that up or just after we can take off all the idlers now obviously we've got the top one there 13 mil we've got this mid the middle big one there another one down the bottom there and obviously we've got the water pump to get off doesn't look like this pump's been leaking um, but they are prone to failing uh, the actual plastic piece on the back can fail on the knurling and just start spinning on it and not actually pumping the water around so um, but we'll just lock these top two in the right position first just before we actually um, get the water pump off you can just see just as i was taking the belt off this one's moved but i know i knew exactly where it was and it's literally, literally just out so we're just going to turn that pump into the position now you can see the pinhole's just there and then we'll lock that off properly the camshaft shouldn't have moved too much you can just see it's not far out from that pinhole there so we'll just put a spanner on the center bolt there just to adjust that slightly to do it um, but with them bolts loose all we need to be is just loose enough just so that the pulley will move slightly and you just want to note as well that when you put in when setting these just before you put the belt on you really want to set them sort of round to the right hand side just as you put the belt on there it's more likely they're going to pull it around to the left because you want to be trying to set it sort of in the middle there and then when, when it's locked off it then allows a bit of adjustment on it as well if it ever needs to be adjusted rather than it being sat to one side so the same again with the fuel pump as well that could be sat sort of in that position there Right, so I've just got that them in now. I did basically just had to put a spanner on the camshaft, just turn it with a little mirror so I could just see to line it up. It's just sometimes the timing pins are really tight on these. I've just got it lined up. I just say I want to advise obviously be careful with it, but I've done this in the past before. Sometimes that tight, just had to give it a really gentle tap with a hammer just to let, just to knock it, just so that I know it's just located right in the hole. That's all. Obviously, once it's in, it's solid, and you can just put your spanner. Obviously, don't try and turn it too hard. But you'll you'll know because obviously it's adjustable once it is locked you can't turn it on the center bolt there same with the fuel pump just give that a light tap but you can just see now that it's lined up the pin just slide just in and out of that there once it's in there that's locked to the actual fuel pump pulley as well and can just turn the sprocket to the sort of right hand side set in there and at this stage now i'll just undo these the three idlers there and then we'll get on to undo the water pump the water pump's held on by three 10 mils i think it's got i think they've got an allen key center you can use an allen key but just prefer to use a 10 mil to get them off and obviously as we undo the water pump drop it out the coolant will all drop down as well so we're just going to put a catch tray underneath it just as we do that i didn't say earlier on but because we line the camshaft up first the crankshaft will always line up um, correctly but if you decide to learn line the crankshaft up first you could find that the camshaft will be 180 degrees out basically you get two turns of the crankshaft to one of the camshafts so if you get your cam your crankshaft in the correct position but you find that your your pin piece for your camshaft is in this sort of position it's basically 180 degrees out if you do another full lap on your crankshaft you'll find that your camshaft is then lined up bang on as well so um, but your fuel pump will line up every time so but yeah we'll just get them pulleys off now and get the coolant get the water pump off It's got the idler wheels out there as well. Now, on the earlier engines, they used to be really prone to these studs and you just like to change these, and certainly on like the one lines. Um, they're not too bad for failing on these later ones. And basically one thing you can do just to check the stud is if you just get a fresh nut and just run it up and down, it just makes sure it runs up and down nice and freely along the threads. And that just proves that the threads aren't stretched. Generally, if that's okay, the stud's okay. So you can see that, that ran up there really nicely. So we'll just get the water pump off now, drop the coolant out.
And it's got all the bolts out for the pump now. They're not, not normally known for being too tight these, but if you just grab the pump and just work it a bit, it should just drop straight out. So that's the water pump out. It doesn't actually feel in too bad a condition. The actual pulley feels okay. The actual spindle bits on. So normally where they fail, sometimes they can fail on the spindle here, and, the, and it'll actually be pump will be spinning, but the plastic piece broke off and they don't, so they stop spinning. So next thing I'm going to do now is just give this a little bit of a clean up, just with a rag and a bit of emery cloth. Now these engines aren't too bad for it. The seal sits on the inside of the pump and just sits in that surface there, so it don't get too manky. Some engines where they bolt up. Can get really sort of crusty around there but we'll just give that a nice clean up just to make sure the new pump sits in nicely and once we'll do that we'll get the pump on we'll talk it up and then we can wash all this coolant off obviously antifreeze is a lubricant so you don't really want it over anywhere that the belt's going to get on but once we've got the pump on and talked up then we can wash this off with some brake cleaner we'll just get that cleaned up cleaned up quickly and run you on to the next step after that So just give that a bit of a clean up, just with a bit of emery cloth, just wiped it down on the inside, just so it gets a nice surface just for the, the new pump to go in. And the pump comes with the O-ring fitted already on it, just put a little bit of silicon grease on there as well. You don't have to, but I always like to. It just, make, just ensures it goes in nicely and doesn't snag or anything like that. So basically I'm just going to fit the water pump into place now. Just going to run the bolts in just by hand, just give them a really light nip, just for the ratchet, and then I'll just run you through talking them up correctly. Right, so just wound the three bolts in there with the water pump, just made sure it was sat back flat first before I did it. Obviously, I just did use the battery ratchet, if only really because I'm quite confident and I use one quite regular. It, you can't, you do need to be careful with them a little bit because sometimes they can actually nip it quite tight, but I've just, just really gently just wind them in. So next thing I'm going to do is just torque them up. The correct torque setting is 15 newton metres. So now that that's talked up, next thing I'm going to do, just use some brake cleaner, just give it a good wash off around the bottom of the pump, just wash all the antifreeze off so that it's nice and dry and clean. It's just that way doing it as well, obviously you don't want any on the belt, but if you do this as well and get it nice and clean, once you put the belt on and you're running it up at the end, it's always nice to check and make sure that you, you haven't got any issues and no water leaks or anything like that. If you know it's bone dry in the first place, it's really easy to spot a leak if you've got one. Right, so now that that's washed off, we're just going to fit the idlers. Just to start with, we'll do the top one, which is the 30 mil. This one's 20 newton meters. Now, on some of the other Volkswagen engines, I did use to leave this off till the belt was on when the belt's really tight. And if you want slackening these off, sometimes it's actually fit that last once the belt was on. But on this engine, we will do fit that now. So it's not too bad to work the belt around after. So. Now we've got the lower idler, which has got the stud on it and a nut. Got a new nut out of the kit, and same as the top, 20 newton meters again.
Yeah. So now I've got the big idlers to fit, and that one's 50 newton meters, and then 90 degrees. It's done in two stages. Right, so now all the idlers are on, it's all talked up, the water pump's talked up. Just before getting too close to the cam belt stage, you do want to just go around, just double check that your pins are in correctly, check that you're pinning the crankshafts in and make sure that's all lined up. And then we're ready to fit the tensioner. As I said, with a new style tensioner, it doesn't have the locking peg on there, it just slides over. We'll just show you well the tensioner's in my hand here. It has got an arrow on it, you can just see there. So that's the direction that you're going to be tensioning it in. We're going to use an Allen key just in there. As we do it and then just to show you as well we'll try to get it on camera as best as possible while doing it and um, but basically as we put tension on it this arrow is going to move across and we're going to be looking to line it up in the center of there and that's when we'll be locking it off but as we put the tensioner on and put the nut on as we put the belt on we're going to want to leave this nut loose so that the tensioner can move freely while we put the belt on now sometimes with this engine the belt can be quite tight and because there's a bit of a lip on the tensioner sometimes it helps to put the tensioner on and slide it over the stud there with the belt as well just sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier i'll put it on to start with and just lightly put the nut on to see if we can get the belt on but if not you might see me just pull the tensioner off and just slide the belt on with it there so yes and just see there it's just loose on there at the minute you need to allow it to to move around as you put the belt on but it should sit roughly in this position there where you can see your uh, your tensioning sort of guide there as well that's all uh, but yeah the, as i said earlier on the pulleys are loose i've just sat them into the right hand position there i know that the actual main camshaft through the pin there is locked solid and same again with the fuel pump it's just over to that right hand side and you can just see the locking pin on the crankshaft is in there and just double check if you're a little bit unsure just make sure again that your line on your pulley lines up with your little arrow on your tool there as well but obviously this can't really come out because it's slid in so you know it's pretty much bang on if the pin's still in line that's all it's always just nice just to double check quick now, but at this stage now we're ready to refit the belt and with the belt it's not too bad with these sort of floating pulleys but normally without them you need to keep it really taut around the right hand side and leave the slacky side on the left where the tensioner is obviously the tensioner will then take up the slack but it does help with two here sometimes because you sort of need someone to put it on the on the crankshaft first hold it on the crankshaft while you work it around everything it can be a little bit fiddly but it's not too bad today but we'll just have a go at getting it on now and just when fitting a new timing belt sometimes they've got arrows on if they've got arrows on the arrows will be pointing the direction that the engine turns over if it hasn't got arrows on it's always good practice to fit it so that the right end's reading in the direction that it's turning over. And some some engines have timing marks, some belts have timing marks on them that relate to the pulleys. We don't have it for this engine because the outer pulleys are floating. So, um, but basically we're going to sit that on in that sort of direction there. We'll just try and get it rooted round now and just show you the next step after that.
All right, so that's the belt on there. You can see it wasn't actually too bad to do. Again, because these pulleys are cracked off and you can, normally you need to keep it really taut around this side, but because you can set that pulley to there, it doesn't really matter because you can, it makes it a lot easier because you can put the belt on. Same with the crankshaft. And then when it's on, let's just sort of tweak it round, taut it, tension it up on this side. And that's the idea of slackening them off. When you put the tension on, it pulls the belt, the tension nice and even all the way around there. So, but just where it's situated at the minute, there is a bit of float in there. It is slightly to the left-hand side still, as you can see in the guide there. But the pulleys on the, uh, the bolt on the crankshaft, on the camshaft, sorry, it's quite nice and central. Obviously that will pull, you can just see it, it'll just pull slightly around there. But it shouldn't land in too bad a position really. So I'm um, at this stage now, just recheck, just make sure your timing marks are all lined up bang on again. It's always nice, it's just always worth just keep checking them. Um, but now we're ready to put some tension on it. And you can just see, just turn it quickly by hand, but as we start turning that, obviously it'll start pulling the belt a bit tauter. So, um, but the next thing I'm going to do now is just get the Allen key in there and then we'll tension it up. Basically, we're just going to just knit this just lightly by hand once we've got it held in the position. And then we'll run you through the torque setting to do it correctly. But basically the first stage of the torque setting is 20 newton meters. Once you've done it to 20 newton meters, you can then pull the Allen key out. It should be enough to hold it to do the second stage of the torque setting. And then once we've torqued that up correctly, we'll then move on to torque the pulley on the, the outer pulley on the camshaft and the fuel pump as well. Just make sure obviously you've got it the right direction around all the pulleys. You can just see obviously on the top one there does need to go to the underneath side of it. Uh, so now I'm just going to put the Allen key in and just pull that round in the, obviously the arrow with the, the, the direction that the arrow turns in the anti-clockwise direction. As we turn that round, you'll see that little pointer arrow move across. I'm basically going to need to lock that in that centre position. I'm going to talk it up the first stage, 20 newton metres. You can just see, just because I was focusing in on there, you couldn't quite see it, but as I was tensioning that round and it pulls the belt so you could just see it pull all this all around here and just nicely tension it up all the way around the belt there. Um, but the 20 newton metres is enough to remove the Allen key. Obviously just make sure that the arrow is still pointing in the middle there. Now that that's set at 20 newton metres we could do the second stage of the torque setting which is 45 degrees. I'll just do that quick now. So that's the tension are all taught correctly obviously again as you've done it just make sure that your arrow is pointed there now it will only be there at the minute as we're locking it off don't be too worried when you're turning the engine over which we're going to do shortly the, the arrow will move slightly that is quite normal and um, we know that that's taught correctly now next thing we're going to do is tension is torque the bolts up on the camshaft pulley and then the fuel pump pulley as well now the camshaft pulley is done in two stages but we're just going to start we're just going to wind them in lightly by hand and we're basically going to do each one to 20 newton meters and i'll run you through the fuel pump and the correct procedure to the way to do it is basically we're just going to set it to 20 newton meters first then we're going to run through a little check to make sure that the timing marks all line up correctly we've just turned it over a couple of times and if it is okay then you do a 45 degree torque after that so We'll just do them to 20 newton meters for now on the on the cam shaft and then we'll do the fuel pump. And so now ready to do the fuel pump and that's 20 newton meters but the fuel pump doesn't need doing again once we've checked it that is just 20 newton meters and that's it job done
Right, so everything's on, all talked up correctly now. Obviously the belt's on, we've got it tensioned up properly on there. Just recheck re again after you've just talked to your pulleys there, just make sure your arrow's lined on, lined up bang on. Have a quick look at your belt, just make sure it's on all the teeth correctly all the way around. Obviously you're still pinned up, just make sure that you, you are pinned up correctly and all your timing marks are still in the right place. Um, but at this stage now, we're now ready to remove the timing pins. And basically we're just going to put the socket on the bottom on the crankshaft again and we're going to do two full laps of the crankshaft which as i said earlier will be one of the camshaft and then we're just going to recheck and make sure that everything lines up correctly if it doesn't line up basically it's just a case of taking the tension off again just taking the belt off just adjusting everything uh, everything again and just setting it and just redoing it but if, if you've done it like this and pinned it correctly you should find that it's bang on so um but yeah we'll just remove the pins now and just as a quick guide just to all I'm going to do as I turn it over, because it's a little bit hard to see, obviously that in there, I'm probably just going to put like a little paint mark on the pulley, again somewhere on there or on the top cover here, just so that as I turn it over I can just watch it, and as I'm getting near it, I'll know that just to keep an eye out and just make sure that everything lines up before we put the pins in that, so it just saves you going past it and then having to do it again. So we'll just get the pins out now and just show you that. Now you don't have to do this, but it's really good practice with doing a cam belt. You really will always want to turn it over at least once and just double check it, just for peace of mind, just to make sure that everything's lined up. And you know that if it's turning over and it's not locking up, you know that there's no valve contact or anything as well. So we'll just do that quickly now and just run you on to the next step after. Now the pins are out, and just so you just put a quick paint mark on there. It's only a rough reference, but all it is is I, as I do one full lap there of the camshaft, and just start, start to see that paint mark come into about here. I can start getting ready and keeping an eye out for the actual hole, ready to pin it up there. So, so I'll just put the the 19 mil socket on the bottom there, multi spline socket, and we'll just turn it over and make sure everything lines up. Right, so we've just done one full lap of the camshaft now, so it's two on the crankshaft there. Um, but just rechecked, I've just put the pin in there, just show you quickly. Just got that pin in on the crankshaft first, but as I said earlier on, the little arrow on there is lined up with that little marker on there. And if I just show you from the top, you can see it's dropped straight into place there. So I know the crankshaft's lined up bang on. If we look at the fuel pump, the mark on the fuel pump there, you can just see, I'm not going to put the pins in it, it's pretty pointless if it's as good as that you can see it's straight through lined up bang on with the hole there you can if you want to just double check but that's you can see that's going to go straight in on there so we know that's bang on and same again with the camshaft as well you can just see the hole there at the back it's absolutely bang on in line there so as long as you can see it's perfectly in line you don't need to put the pin in but you can if you want just to double check but so uh, as long as it's there I'd be pretty happy at that so next thing I'm going to do now is just do the second stage of the torque setting on these camshaft ones which is 45 degrees afterwards. So we know that everything's bang on. As I said earlier on the tensioner, the arrow does move a bit. You don't need to worry about that. It will move while the belt's moving around afterwards. So, but we know that's torqued up correctly. And we know that all the idler pulleys are torqued up correctly as well. So we don't have to worry about them. So we'll just torque that up now and just run you on to the next step after that. Just make sure it's 45 degrees, not 45 newton meters. Right, so everything's now talked up, bang on, we've double checked the timing, we know that's absolutely spot on. And that's pretty much the procedure for the main cam belt replacement. Um, it's got you up to this stage now. It's pretty much a case of rebuilding everything exactly as we took it apart. I'm just going to speed through some of this uh, section, but I'll just overlay all the torque settings for the engine mounting bolts and, and anything else I can think of as well. Uh, I'll, put, I'll overlay the torque settings for the crank pulley. Um, but we'll just run you through anything that we need to along the way as well and then run you through bleeding the cooling system at the end as well now you can at this stage if you want just put a bit of coolant in the bottle just ready now it'll just help some of it just get through into the system a little bit 
Um, but either way, it doesn't really matter. You can just do it at the end and bleed it up at the end. So we'll just crack on now, start getting some of this back together and just run you through anything along the way. Right, so everything on top is all built up exactly as we took it apart now. Just put all the clips and everything back together. We've just topped the coolant up just to give it a chance to settle through as we lift it up in the air. Obviously, because the engine mount's on now, we can go lift it back up in the air. It just makes it a little bit easier for us with the ramp. Just do everything underneath, just putting all that back together. Again, I'll list any torque settings if I need to for that. And then once we've got that back together, we'll just run you through bleeding the cooling system as well. Just try to show you quickly on the cover there's one little locator there that needs to tuck under that side and the other one just up there as i just said uh, from earlier on as we took it off that just sort of slots in against each other as well Right, so all the casings back on now. Next thing we'll do is just put the lower crank pulley on. And so they're interested to line that little hole up there with the little peg on the on the pulley there. And I'll just overlay the torque setting for it. But with these, I do norm I normally just do them up with the buzz gone. But if you're not so sure, you ought to really be talking it up correctly. And um, we're just going to put that on now and just re run, run you through refitting the auxiliary belt. And while the belt's off, it's always worth just checking your pulley like your idler there. This pulley has actually got a little bit of play in it. It's not too bad, but it is a little bit noisy when you spin it. So, um, but I haven't got one, so I'm not going to fit one tonight. But it's not, not too bad, just a tiny bit of play in it. Right, so the auxiliary belt's on now. Once you've got your belt on, just make sure you just have a good look round and just make sure it's properly looped round all your pulleys on all the ribs correctly. If you've got it slightly off a rib, or if you're not careful when you start it up, it might ride off onto the outside or on the inside and wrap around all the pulleys. So just have a quick look at that. Um, at this stage now, we're ready to drop it back down. Obviously, the arch liner isn't on yet, but just for the video, and it's always nice as well, 
I always like to do this normally anyway, but I'll drop it down while I'm bleeding it up. I'll just leave this cover off just so I can have a quick look when we strike it up and just make sure that the belt's running nice and true as well. And then while we're bleeding it up, we can leave it running. We'll just spend the time putting the arch liner and the under tray back on. So just drop it back down now. Right, so you can just see the coolant ain't actually dropped at all at the minute. Um, but basically what we're going to do now, just to run it up, these, these engines don't actually have a bleed screw on them for the cooling system. The way to bleed them up is basically run the engine, we'll be leaving the cap off, we'll put the temperature on the inside of the car to full heat and we'll put it on full blow, turn the aircon off and basically keep leaving it and just run it up to temperature, keep an eye on the bottle. You might find at some stages the air passes through and drops the level might drop down quite a bit and just like keep topping it up, just keep it topped up to the midway marker there. But then basically once we've once we're happy we've got most of the air out we'll then put the cap on run it fully up to temperature and run it down the road and then once you turn it off just let it settle let the coolant level settle and then from cold you'll be checking the level again you might find that you just need to top it up um, but at this stage now obviously we're ready to just strike it up you might find it as well when you do strike it up it might just drop the as the pump moves around it might just drop the level all of a sudden as well so you need to top it up there um, but we'll just strike it up quick have a quick listen make sure it sounds okay if you think there's an issue Obviously, just be ready to turn it off quick, and then once it's running, we'll just have a quick look at the auxiliary belt, just to make sure it's running okay. So, just strike it up quick now. Right, so see there, that struck straight up, sounded absolutely spot on. Just had a quick check of the auxiliary belt there, that was running nice and true. I've just turned it off just to finish the video off, um, but normally at this stage now, I'll just leave it running, as I said earlier on, just with the, the temperature on full heat, and we'll just keep an eye on that, just while we finish rebuilding everything, putting it all back together. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll just leave it recording while we finish it off, put it back together and just run you through the torque settings for the wheel, for the wheel nuts at the end as well. Um, but yeah, that, that should be most of what you need to get your cam belt done. So we'll just crack on now and just finish the job off.